good morning farmers are our backbone and uh, lifeline to our country if you see the united nations statistical year book 2023 on food and agriculture 44% of the population in india make a living out of farming it is 26% globally for me and for many of the first generation it professionals in fact first generation employees farming holds a special significance in our life because our parents made living out of farming it's part of our lives but none of us have anything fancy to continue farming as a profession united nations report says world would add 2 billion more people imagine 2 billion more people by 2050 and we would need 50% more food than what we produce right now urbanization is picking up very fast but cultivatable land is growing up by only 5% adding to that there might be there might be a 30% drop in the agriculture production due to erratic climate conditions the challenge before us is overwhelming how can we feed this growing population without overwhelming the planet resources but none of these numbers truly hit me hard until i witnessed something more alarming when i met some of our farmer groups in the village it was 2019 april i was accompanying a agriculture startup to our village and they want to understand the farming practices lending rates and also the market rates for our farmers i was there to translate between these farmers and this agri startup for a 20 minute conversation we had around 20 farmers each of 4 uh, 5 acres land and little did i know that this conversation would reshape my understanding about farming and farming issues in the country or in the village at least one of the question that stuck very hard on all of us was how many of your next generation is into farming the answer was just two that is two out of 20 farmers sitting in that meeting it's not it's just 10% and the next follow up question was how can these two farmers continue farming for the future and also add neighboring farms in their cultivation models no one had a convincing answer some of them said they don't need to do farming because they their kids are well settled some of them said they would lease out the lands to other people but we all know that's not the right answer we all looked stand looking at each other waiting for a right answer as per nabard 63% of the current generation farmers think the next generation don't do farming for multiple reasons and that proves that you know we are not alone that means we are not the only village having a problem so this is a problem at the global level adding to that one more number i want you guys to start thinking about is average age of a farmer is 55 and there are only 10% of the farmers in their 30s that only added to the bigger problem that we are all worried about in fact this is the only community that doesn't want their next generation to continue in their profession i'm glad it happened to most of us otherwise we would have been jobless for a good part of our career once i had this problem i started looking at the ways and means of building more capacity or more capability to these next generation farmers so that they can do bigger farms in the future i started interacting with different people university professors to understand what can we do that's when i was introduced to this concept called farmer producer company where 
farmers can collectively work together and then cultivate and sell their produce in the market it was gaining lot of momentum because central government wants to promote 10000 farmer producer companies in the country but unfortunately i didn't see many farmer producer companies doing well but i thought this model works this model works with a slightly different approach and a better business model like any it guy i started looking at this problem as a case study and analyzing each stage of the farming process really each stage of the farming process right from soil testing the seed selection crop management fertilization harvesting storage and also marketing no wonder the farming is in crisis because the results that we found in this case study were very really alarming i'll give you a few examples farmers hardly do any soil testing they they don't have a practice of doing soil testing decision making on what kind of fertilizer to be used is heavily depending on the fertilizer store guy and there's a heavy dependency on the middlemen for harvesters and also selling their produce and there is zero tech usage literally zero tech usage so this made us really alarming in terms of how we can approach this problem we have farmers struggling to survive on one side and the farmers who don't want to change their farming practices on other side so then we started looking at a framework that doesn't only deal with the minimum support price or the availability of uh, you know seeds and fertilizers but to build a framework for future of farming future of farming to survive and succeed and also feed the world for the growing population so this future of farming framework is focused on cultivating sustainably and then using technology and also adding lot of value addition to the produce the moment we talk about sustainability soil plays a very very important role the current soil testing models say it will take at least 3 4 days to a week to do the soil testing and get the soil results but a regular farmer can never do a soil testing in this current model one of the ngo i was associated with came forward to do a soil testing at the farm level but we all know that's a basic soil testing but that is enough for us to understand what is required for that soil to get ready for the next crop i'm glad this helped us to understand the soil condition and then once the soil parameters are known farmers know how to prepare for the next crop then the focus was to get the right seed the local agriculture university helped us to get the right seed from their extension centers in fact they encouraged us to start working on the seed development program but i know it's a long term plan for us then once the soil is taken care seed is taken care we want to focus on the right inputs to the farm right inputs in terms of water and also the fertilizer this is where we took a tech approach tech in terms of identifying the real time soil parameters and recommending the farmers on when to fertilize and when to water one of the startup that i invested was working on iot based soil monitoring and crop management solution for aquaculture after hearing what i was trying to do in agri they were ready to do a pilot for five farmers after the initial hesitation these farmers liked the fact that you know they were getting an alert on their phones on when to fertilize and when to water adding to that one of our friend who was working in it also was trying to get into a similar problem statement so he was working with an, one of the iits to get a nanotech based soil optimizer that will help you to stabilize lot of soil parameters one now we have a soil we have the seed and also the farming method now we want to validate how this 
three parameters that we worked will help us build a proper sustainable farming practices. Seed and certification body of the state in collaboration with QCI was doing certification for farmers. They were ready to help us certify our farmers on what we are doing. But any certification requires a lot of data. I'm glad our IoT sensors were helping us minimize that kind of data collection. Even though we couldn't avoid documentation, but these farmers you know, were able to submit data from these sensors to get the certification. Then we followed up working on a lot of value addition for, a, for these farmers, especially on the post-harvesting models. With that initial success, and then these five pilot farmers as the board of directors, a farmer producer company was born in 2022. Technology usage expanded into areas like satellite-based crop monitoring, precision farming using drones, and another global agriculture startup came in and then said, we would capture your carbon and then convert them into carbon credits. Adding to that, they also started working on end-to-end -end traceability using blockchain for more authentic farm produce. Hopefully, they will achieve this by next season. All these farmers are now certified for their sustainable farming practices. They have their own collection center and expanded their agriculture infrastructure in terms of a cold storage, solar dehydration plant, their own inputs division, and they didn't stop just at the infrastructure. They also built two offline stores, an online e-commerce platform, and of course they are on ONDC, and as I speak, they have five franchise requests to set up offline stores on their brand. It took a good three to four years to build whatever we could build, and the 10 passionate individuals, five from the farming community and five from the agri-tech background. It probably will take another three, four years to become a household brand in the grocery segment and with the more collaboration from different players. That is the story of a farmer producer company and it's our sincere effort in building technology enabled agriculture platform for sustainable development practices for small and marginal farmers to continue farming and also to encourage more people to come into farming. In fact, these last four or five years working with farmers was a quite learning experience. We learned the way farmers manage their crops, risks they face, decisions they take and the environment they deal with. And I found a striking similarity between how farmers manage their farms and we manage companies. Growing up, I saw my dad, now my brother, and a lot of extended friends and family dedicating their lives to agriculture. It is truly fascinating now to see how they embrace this kind of technologies and then get ready to do farming for the next generation, even to do farming at a bigger scale. If I have to take some learnings out of this entire journey and then talk about here, irrespective of the industry, be agile and use technology as a tool to take better decisions or probably informed decisions. And this entire journey of three, four years, without collaboration, I can't imagine any of us doing something like this in a village. So collaboration is such a crucial thing in every business going forward. And the last one very specific to this was take care of the weed. I'm sure just imagine applying that concept back into the business you are in. Take care of the weed before it destroys your crop. It can be a business, it can be a school, it can be a, a farm. And before I conclude, coming from a rural background, studied in a government school, lived the entire life in India, if I can think about this much for an agriculture community in our village, imagine with right resources, 
better upbringing, better infrastructure, how many of you can impact the farming community in your area? Because 30 years ago, farmer issues were impacting only farmers. 20 years ago, it started impacting the society. But now, it's going to impact the entire civilization. Keep harvesting. Thank you.